My brothers and sisters, there are many, many different versions of the Bible. As we were studying, there was, I counted more than 20 different versions of the Bible. Listen, there's an NIV version. That's the New International Version. There's an NLT version. That is the New Living Translation. There is the ESD version, the English Standard Version. There's the NSAV version. There is the New American Standard Version. There is the KJV version. We all know what that is. That is the There is the HCS version of the Bible, which is the Holman Christian version. But not only that, there are, there is the ASV, there's the American Standard Version, there's the DPT, the Darby Bible Translation, there's the ERV, the English Revised Version, there's the GWT Version, which is the God's Word Translation, there's the ISV Version, the International Standard Version, there's the YWC, the Wycliffe Bible, and then there's the YL. The Young's Translation. And the list goes on and on. But let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. There's one thing that all of these versions have in common. They all have in common Genesis chapter 1, that in the beginning, God created. Y'all talk to your people. Make no mistake about it, my brothers and sisters. In the beginning, God created the heaven. And my, my question to you this morning, I want to know, do you know, do you believe the Bible is the word of God? You know, I have a, uh, you know, it's one thing to talk about God. And we always talk about how good God is. Chad, you know, <laughs> good God. Oh, I love Jesus. He just, oh, he's just so sweet. I just love him. You know, he's, he's just been so good to me. You know, Jesus would never hurt a fly. <laughs> but you know, I have a coin here in my hand. And you know, the coin has two sides. See, I'm going somewhere with this. See, it's one thing to talk about the goodness of God. And God is good. It's one thing to talk about the love of God. And God is love. That's what the Bible tells us. Okay? But let's not forget the other side of God. You do know there's another side. Somebody ain't listening to me in here. Y'all that stay at home on Sunday, well, I'm going to sleep in. This moment, because God is a good God, you know. God forgive me if I just sleep a little, a little bit longer. Knowing you're supposed to be in church, knowing you're supposed to be in Sunday school, knowing you're supposed to be in Bible study, knowing you're supposed to be in prayer center, knowing you're supposed to be in Wednesday night Bible study. This place should look like this in Bible study. Oh, I'm preaching up in here now, and ain't nobody saying Amen. But that's all right. That's all. When you leave here, you're going to be running to the Hallelujah, preacher. Preacher. <laughs> Listen, I'm saying it's all right to say that God is love. He is. But don't forget, God loved Adam and Eve. Come on, talk to me up here. God loved Adam and Eve, but when Adam and Eve sinned, God kicked them out. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. Jesus Christ. Yes. 
My brothers and sisters, I hold you long. I want to give you seven quick little observations that I made. Just seven quick observations about the Word of God. You do believe the Bible is the Word of God, do you? Yes, sir. Oh, I mean, they say, yes, sir. I heard them say it. Did you hear them, Pastor? I heard them say, yes, sir. They ain't showing up a Bible, sir. But they say, yes, sir. They believe the Bible is the Word of God. Yes, sir. We can show up. Yes, sir. Listen. I want to point out just seven quick things. I'm going to take my seat. And we're going to go home and eat some fried chicken. Some cornbread. Some ham hocks. Oh, I forgot. Oh, no. Listen. The first thing we want to notice is that the Creator proves that the Bible is the Word of God. God Himself. Listen to me, church. Yeah, and that's a good thing. Look, touch your neighbor. Up your neighbor. Say, neighbor. You got the right one, baby. Uh-huh. 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 Listen, the creator proves the Bible is the word of God. In Genesis chapter 1, Moses is the writer. We all know Moses. We know the story about Moses. Moses is the writer of this text. Moses writes, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And one thing I like about it, Moses is very descriptive in his information about God. You know, when we talk about God, we want to be descriptive. We want people to know what we know, what we know, what we know. You want to be descriptive when you're talking about the Heavenly Father. Amen. Moses was very descriptive. Moses said in verse number three that God created the light. You look outside at the windows. Don't you see the light? Can't you see the Is anybody blind? Not Paul? Is Paul here this morning? Don't mean to be offensive. God created the firmaments. God created water in verse 9. God created the heaven, the earth, in verse number 10. Now, let me, let me share something with you. One thing we need to know about, about our God. When the president, when President Obama, when he comes to the United to Dallas, Texas, he flies in to Southwest Airlines. Anybody know about Lovefield, Southwest Airlines? Obama flies into Southwest Airlines. And when they know the president's coming, no planes can fly out, no, flight, no planes can fly in. Matter of fact, they block all the roads. You know, they barricade everything. Why? Because the president of the United States is coming. But let me tell you something when God comes. Anybody know about God? See, see, when, when, see before Adam sinned, Adam had fellowship with God. Come on, somebody. Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. But after Adam sinned, God didn't show up that like, no, like that no more. Because God, matter of fact, Moses met God there in the wilderness. And the Bible says that Moses met the Lord at the burning bush. Hallelujah. And the bush said, Moses, take off your sandals because the feet where you're standing is holy ground. And you know, we need to have that same kind of reverence for God. Let me give you some scripture here about our God. The Bible says that, jump a little ahead of myself. Psalm 29. Psalm 29, verse number 3. Turn with me there quickly. Psalm 29. This is a very interesting verse because Moses is very descriptive of, of David, the writer here of this text. Notice what the scripture says in Psalm 29, verse 3. It says, the voice of the Lord is what? Upon the waters, the God of glory thundering. The Lord is upon many waters. 
Turn back to Job 37. Job number 37. Pastors have got done preaching in the book of Job last Sunday. Look at Job chapter 37, verses number 3 and verses number 5. He directed it under the whole heavens and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. And at it a voice roared, he thundered with the bars of his excellency, and he will not stay there when his voice is heard. Watch this. Look at verse number five. God thundered. <laughs> See, the Bible says no man has seen God at any time. Moses wanted to take a look at God. But God said, you can't see me. No man can see me and live. But God is that powerful. Come on. Hit it again. I want you to understand something. No man has seen God. But you certainly hear him when he's coming. Amen? Come on, somebody. God himself proved that the Bible is the word of God. But look at this, the next thing we want to talk about is that not only does God prove that the Bible is the word of God, creation proves that the Bible is the word of God. Notice Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 through 12. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. This is very interesting. It says that God said, let the earth bring forth grass and earth yielding seed. And the fruit trees yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself. Upon the earth, and it was so, and verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed, watch this, was in itself. Can I illustrate this for you? God said, read that verse again. Verse 11, 12. Read that. Somebody read that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. Read that. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herd, the yielding seed, and the fruit, the yielding fruit, after the past. Through Jesus he said, upon the earth, and it was so. Did you catch that? Whose seed is what? In itself. Now what I have here is a jalapeno, a jalapeno. You missed it. You missed the whole idea. You didn't get the picture. See, 
the whole idea of the illustration is to show the important part is that I can take a seed from the apple. I can take a seed from the bell pepper. I can take a seed from the tomato. I can take a seed from the jalapeno. Okay? I can take one of those seeds. But here's the best part about it. I can take that same seed, and I just cut it. I can put it in the ground and let it grow. And when the fruit or the vegetable comes to full maturity, and I take it to my table, and I open it up, guess what I'm going to find? Is the Bible the Word of God? Is it the Word of God? Oh, yes. Not only does the Creator prove that the Bible is the Word of God, the creation proves Proves. Notice verse number. Verse number. Uh, look at verse number twenty. Genesis chapter one, verse twenty and verse tw twenty-one. Notice what the Bible says. It says, and God said. Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and the fowl that may fly above the earth. We call them birds. In the open firmament of the heaven. Now, now look. God. The creature proves that the Bible is the word of God. Now, just a few days ago, I was, uh, I was watching the Wild Kingdom. Anybody ever watch the Wild Kingdom? Like watching animals and things like that. And God, our God has created some bad boys when it comes to creatures and creatures. Man, our God is an awesome God. Y'all better hear me. I was sitting there and I was watching the show. And there was these cattle. And they were getting ready to cross this river. I don't know where they were. They were in Africa or where, where they were. But anyway, the cattle, they, the, the whole herd of them headed across the river. Mm. But back in the background, there was this big So the cows start heading across the river. Watch. Then this alligator, he waited. He waited until he saw one cow all to himself. Man, that big old choker came up out of that water. Y'all listen to me. He opened that big trap of his. He grabbed that cow and he began to I'm drowning. Our God is an awesome God, y'all. The creature proves that the Bible is the word of God. There's one, there's one particular creature I've been kind of studying on. That's, the Bible talks about him, calls him Leviathan. Oh, God. Look, God got some creatures out there. One look at it. You'll die just looking at it. That's just how powerful our God is. Listen. The creature proves that the Bible is the word of God. Not only did God create all the animals, but God created you and me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Now, uh, I've got to tell you this other story. I'm going to move on to that. In the news the other day, there was, a, there was this guy, him and his daughter, went out to the coast. And uh, he wanted to take his daughter out to, I don't know, do some fishing or just relaxation or whatever. And anyway, they were out on the pier. All of a sudden, this huge, gigantic shark jumps out of 
of the water. Grab the man and take him up. You know, it, it, it amazes me. And people say, well, you know, me and God. You know, me and God, we buddy, buddy, and all that. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Yeah. Yeah. But not only does God prove the Bible is the word of God, creation proves the Bible is the word of God. The creature proves that the Bible is the word of God. But also the commandments prove the Bible is the word of God. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, notice Genesis chapter 2, verse number 16. And the Lord God commanded the man and saying of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For in it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. See, the commandments prove, my brothers and sisters, that the Bible is the word of God. You know, uh, you know, as we think about the, the creature, and I want everybody to do this for me. All right. All the men in the church, boys, all the boys and all the men, say Everybody, all the men, men and boys, if you go to the men's restroom, <laughs> you need to be standing. <laughs> all right, have a seat. Now all the ladies and all the girls stand. Come on. Come on. Everybody. All the girls, ladies. Now. Okay. Thank you very much. Let me see. Now, if you're not a man, and if you're not a female, I want you to get with Pastor Thomas. I'm on the third, some of these ministers, and we're going to pray for you because you're confused. Okay? See, the Bible proves, see, that his creatures are, his, his creatures prove that the Bible is the word of God. The commandments prove. Now, now, ladies, I know some of y'all know. The Bible says not only does the commandments prove the Bible is the word of God, but the curse proves the Bible to be the word of God. <laughs> Notice Genesis 3, 11. To the woman, God said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrows and thy conception. In other words, having a baby just like kid. How many mothers in here? If you're a mother, raise your hand. I wish someone, some mother would stand up and demonstrate to us, to the church, what it's like to be in the labor room right at the very point of that. Sister said, you don't want to go there, doctor. <laughs> Listen. Cramping, all that's part of the, the curse. Women, you know, I'm like, wow. Brothers, if you've never been in the delivery room, Oh, you don't want me now. <laughs> Not only does God prove the Bible to be the Word of God, creation proves the Bible to be the Word of God. The creatures prove the Bible 
is the word of God. The commandments prove. The Bible is the word of God. Y'all are almost done here. The curse proves. The Bible to be the word of God. But I got one more for you. The cemetery. Whatever that. 
And I went up to the counter and I said, man, I want orange chicken. And she, she brought up orange chicken. Then she yelled at me, what do you want to talk to today? I know what you're talking about right now. I don't know what that meant, but it sounded like she said, get that man some orange chicken. Bible. 